Hey everybody, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to share with you our topic for today, which is not a step-by-step -step guide or something, but mostly me sharing some kind of inside thoughts about a particular scholarship application, a particular scholarship, and you going through the scholarship application process, just guiding you, giving you some tips on how to think about the various parts of the scholarship application and to make sure that you submit a strong enough application. And today we are going to be covering the Schwarzman scholarships. The Schwarzman scholarships is one of those VIP, like VVIP scholarships for international students and it is done by this uh, big uh, names in the business world who are like interested in creating a link between China and the rest of the world because there is all of these geopolitical things going on where people have this, I don't know if I'll say insecurity about the rise of China. So people are trying to understand uh, let's let's send our students to study in China. Let them understand the culture, the way of doing things, and then let them also understand also that when they bring back that knowledge, we can get an inside perspective into how things happen in China. So this is the goal of this particular scholarship, and I'm going to be taking you through the various parts of the application, like what you'll have to go through, and I'll give you like small pointers on what to, how to think about it when you are going to be applying for this uh, particular scholarship okay so I'm going to share with you first of all because the, the, the scholarship application is you'll have to go through all of these stages when you apply for the scholarship so we start here you can see here Schwarzman scholars application instructions so the things that you are going to have to submit when you're applying for the scholarship the deadline for this scholarship is September 19th 2023 so you still have some time to digest this this video if you need to come back to watch it later save it up or if you need to like pause look through your application that is okay too so the first thing that you will have to submit when you apply for this scholarship is your personal information and the good thing about this is that they have given you uh, some kind of of like help like tips on what to do your legal name nationality gender place of birth you have to provide all of that information and then there is the other part called the about me section and here you have to submit information about you like they say it's a 100 word summarizing your leadership accomplishments and future aspirations and the good thing about this please don't miss this when you do the application is that they have given you uh, a link to the other scholars that have applied for this scholarship so you can see their their, their uh, what they have done and it can give you some ideas ideas on how to write your own section. 100 words summarizing your leadership accomplishments and future aspirations. When you when you write this part, be as specific as possible. Don't be general. State exact thing that you did, exact year, if there were some key uh like uh Things that we can we can pull from there, like this was the accomplishment from this, put it there. And do not think that anything is too small. I know somebody who was like, oh, I was a leader of our Girl Scouts, but it's not that, it's not that important. No, it is. If you're a class perfect or whatever thing, that is a sign of a leadership. So put anything that you have done in a leadership role there. Don't state general things. Be specific. I was this and I did this from this time to this time. I worked with this people and this people. And this was the result of what happens. And this is what I want to do in the future. I want to take this and start doing this particular thing. I want to continue and build on this. Be as specific as possible when you are answering this other this uh, section of the about me. Then you have the resume or the curriculum vitae. Here, it is like a regular resume, but the thing is, remember, the goal of this scholarship is they are training leaders. This scholarship wants to train leaders. So you need a section on your resume where you're showing your leadership experiences and accomplishments and any professional experiences. You have to put that there. There has to be a section on your resume that has these things, which maybe may not be required when you are submitting for other applications, but this particular one, it has to be included there. And then the other part that is interesting is a video instruction. Please, when you are going, we live in a day and age where our phones have gotten really good. You can just take a video on your phone. So that is good enough. And they have like instructions on what you should be able to to submit so this is this is um uh the the, the 
the idea is we want to see you we want to hear you talk we want to be able to read your energy we want to see how 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 confident you are in front of the camera because remember it's a leadership scholarship they, they are thinking about you are going to be leading some people someday so they want to judge how much of a leader you are so make sure you look good good camera in front of in front of good lighting and you do your introduction okay and then now you have to now put your education information the institutes that you have studied at your grade point average is extremely important so i hope that you have a good gpa when you are going to be applying for this scholarship it is a fully funded scholarship anyway and then your transcripts please make sure that you have your transcripts when you're going to be applying for the scholarship and language language they say that uh Remember, it goes back to the same thing. This is a scholarship where they want to train leaders. The more languages you know, the better for you. For example, I speak English, French, some Japanese, and my native tongue a bit. If any of my family members are watching this video, they'll be screaming like, She does not speak the mother tongue! <laughs> I don't speak it that much, but at least I have a good sense of, I can understand a little bit, a little bit. So put those language skills there because they are hoping that you are this person who will be traveling the world, making deals for different corporations or for different governments. And they want to see how good of a linguist you are. And then they now want to see your leadership roles. I said it already. That is the goal. Awards and recognition are extremely important because the idea is that if you are somebody that people are already recognized, as a leader in what you do then there is that oh there is something about this person that is special that we should pay attention to professional experience have you and the the, the thing with this professional experience is yes working is important um, they say this you should list up to two full-time work experiences and if you have if you're a student with no full-time uh, uh, experience employment you're not required to fill this this uh, section and having no full-time work experience does not count against you if you are an applicant so that's amazing it's amazing that they, they stated this clearly but the thing is that do not look at any experience as a small experience an internship you put it there if it is volunteering work you put it there make sure remember this is a, a scholarship that is provided by uh, it's in Tsinghua University, but this the Schwarzman Scholarship is actually kind of a U.S.-based ideological kind of a thing. So voluntary experiences, working within the community, those things always count as important. And then the next one is your essays. Each application, each applicant is required to provide two essays with two short answer responses. The two required essays are leadership essay and a statement of purpose. Remember, I review statement of purposes. So if you want me to review your essays, you want me to review your statement of purpose, please. Please do well to send it to me there is i'll put the link in the description box sign up so you can send it to me and i am going to review it okay recommendations please i hope that you professionals as well as academics make sure you get those people who are going to write uh, recommendation letters for you i've always told you all oh, when you are about to get your recommendation letter sit with the person down explain to the person your goals the about the scholarship because it's not like professors around the world keep track of what student is applying for what explain to them the scholarship let them know the background of it let them know why you are going to study it let them know what your future goals studying this scholarship and the goals of the scholarship body so they can properly craft good recommendation letters for you do not accept any general general recommendation letters it's not going to help you at all and then uh, clarification of comments if you did any military service so those are all the things that you are going to uh, like submit when you apply for this scholarship thank you guys so much for being here I hope that you learned a thing or two about applying for this particular scholarship ahead of time and you can come back and watch this if you found this helpful please do want to subscribe to this channel and please share this video with one person a friend a brother a sister an auntie an uncle someone in your local church someone in your local Local community remember I work with students one-on-one -on -one from the start of your scholarship application process right through till the end so if you want to work with me the link is in the description box click on it and I am going to work with you I'm going to see you all in the next one cheers